My paternal grandmother gave me a pile of old newspaper articles from the 1950s. She said, I saved these for you. I thought to myself, that's weird. Why did she give me those? Maybe grandma knew more about my journey than I did when I was 17. I started my journey wanting to be a nurse, but couldn't stand the needles. So I changed my major to public health. On one hand, Grandma Josephine gave me newspaper articles on addictions, and my other grandmother, Dorothy, went to treatment at the age of 76 for prescription drug abuse. What were they trying to say to me? I wanted to help others not have to go through something like grandma, but I didn't know how. I witnessed many of my maternal grandmother's family get-togethers, ending up in fights because of alcohol and drug use. Both sides of my family had secrets. My grandfather talked about his Seneca heritage only to certain family members and gathering information photos have been difficult. My family hid it so much that my paternal grandmother, Josephine, was upset when I started working at the Saginaw Chippewa tribe in Mount Pleasant while I was in college. I stayed working for the tribe for 14 years, first as a substance abuse youth assistant, then a youth counselor, intake worker to accreditation specialist, and even program director. I remember being at a prevention conference and watching police officers and judges drinking. And I wondered, how could they tell others not to drink if they were doing that themselves? And then I thought, how could I continue to drink and do prevention at the same time? I felt like such a hypocrite. I began drinking at the age of 18, and it increased when I was a junior and senior in college. Through my job, I started learning more about a recovery by attending and running meetings. Recovery is not just about stopping the drinking and drugging, it's about changing our behaviors. Sometimes we trade one addiction for another or other behaviors start to kick in. For me, it was the codependency. I would get involved in toxic, non-committal relationships that often turn emotionally, physically, and sexually abusive. I'm glad to say that I've been in a 21-year relationship with my significant other, Kevin. In the beginning, it was stormy, and through it, we raised three children, and now we are helping them through their struggles. I still have grandmother's newspaper articles, and some of the research has changed, but addictions remain the same. They do not discriminate. Recovery happens every day. It's a lifestyle and you have to take care of yourself. It affects the whole family. I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety in 2001 and I stopped drinking in 1999. I started working for the Little River Band of Ottawa Indians Bedabin Behavioral Health Program since June 1st, 2006. I am still involved with prevention. I'm a certified alcohol and drug counselor and do a lot of recovery support. In recovery, there's hope for you and the family. Altogether, I've been working to help people with addictions for 32 years, and I am grateful for the lessons I have learned. It probably saved my life.